Today I'm sharing how this dreary secretary desk that I found at a thrift store turns into this gorgeous antique old fashioned looking piece. I can't wait to share all the steps with you here on my channel today. vintage secretary desk at my local uh, thrift store for $19.99 which in my opinion is a steal of a deal it does have some issues uh, somebody did try repairing it on their own so there's visible screws which obviously you shouldn't be seeing um, but it's a really cute piece I mean it's it needs a little bit of fixing up but it's really really cute and I can't wait to get started on it so here's my favorite way of cleaning. I take a TSP or a TST substitute, such as this Dixie Bell's White Lightning Cleaner, and I put it in a spray bottle. And for this, you only need like half a teaspoon or a teaspoon to fill this whole bottle. And then I keep it, I give it a shake, and when I'm ready to clean my furniture, the easiest way I do it and the quickest is I just spray it all down. Of course, removing any drawers because we want to get inside the drawers as well. Now, I have an appropriate workspace to do this in. Oops, we're gonna get rid of that. And I realize not everybody does, but you could do this outdoors. You could put lay a plastic sheet on the floor so uh, you don't muck up your floors, like a drop cloth or a plastic sheet. And I just get it all soaked with this white lightning water. Then I come in with a sponge. This is like an auto sponge I use. And I give it a really, really good wipe down every nook and cranny. Because when you get these pieces, whether it's curbside or at the thrift store, cleaning is a must because they will be filthy and to get a good paint job and a good finish you want everything to be really really cleaned well to clean off my white lightning and or tsp i have another bottle exact same bottle with clean water in it and i just repeat the same steps Usually it takes two times of spraying and two times of wiping down with the clean water. And then once my sponge is no longer getting dirty, I know I'm ready and done. So now I'm just gonna mix some Bondo to fill in these holes, hardware holes and um, the holes on here. It's about a golf size thing of Bondo and then about a pea size, uh, an ample pea size thing of hardware. And that way you mix it up really really well and Bondo dries extremely fast so within about yeah maybe about three to five minutes working time with this which is ample to fill in any holes I'll actually include the Bondo uh, video that I've done so I've done a whole video on repairing furniture with Bondo and I'll include that in the end credits and then I use um, a plastic putty knife, but you could also use a metal putty knife. And I fill in the hole. And then this will all be sanded down after. given the entire piece an overall sanding and I've sanded down uh, the Bondo very smooth so we're good to go on that and the first thing that's driving me crazy is this naked keyhole so I have a keyhole cover from Woody Bend and I'm just going to be applying that to cover it up and dress her up a little bit I will admit I'm kind of addicted to these Would You Bend molds because they are so easy to use and they make such a drastic difference in my furniture, which you'll see, especially on this piece. I didn't use a whole lot, uh, but it really makes a big, big impact. And it's so straightforward to use. Really, you heat it up with either um, 
a blow dryer or a heat gun. They will get pliable. You add some wood glue onto the back. You position it in place, then apply a little bit more heat and you wait for it to dry. It's that easy. When you're applying would you bend, a quick tip to get rid of the excess glue is to wait until the glue partially dries. Take a little toothpick and it just scrapes right off. Then you don't have to fuss with it. So after all that prep, now comes the fun part. <laughs> I used Silk All-in-One Mineral Paint by Dixie Bell and the color is Hampton Olive. And I chose this color because it's such a beautiful antique green, like something that you'd find in a museum or in an old 19th century home, or it's just, it's just a really lovely, soft, vintage green color. Uh, so what I did was I sprayed the inside and the outside of the drawers. I knew I wanted to use Dixie Bell's new transfer in lace on the inside of the drawer. So the inside actually just got a fairly light coating and same with the back of this piece. Um, and then I opened up the desk portion and I sprayed the inside of the desk in this Hampton Olive as well. The inside of this desk was the deciding factor for me to spray this piece because I'll be honest, I've done these little desks before and hand painting the inside of these, ugh, it's, <laughs> it is tedious and it is not easy to do. So with the sprayer, it's just so much easier. That's not to say that it can't be done with a brush. This exact same finish can be brushed on because silk all-in-one mineral paint uh, is self-leveling so it levels beautifully. You would get a really, really smooth finish. Plus, it's an all-in-one. So that means that there's a built-in primer. There's also a built-in top coat. So it's a real time saver. You'll see the difference between the first coat of spray and the second coat of spray, which I'll uh, show you in a moment here. But it sprays beautifully, it brushes beautifully, and uh, either way, you're gonna get a lovely, lovely finish. I often get asked what sprayer I use. It's a Husky, very moderately priced. I think, uh, I don't know, they sell for maybe between 70 and $90 for the set, but it does require a compressor for use. I've had this paint gun since 2013, and it's been a workhorse for me ever since. I'm, I'm very, very pleased with it. So here I'm spraying the second coat. You might see that the first coat does have some splotchiness, a little bit of bleed through showing through, but that's just fine. The primer is included in this all-in-one mineral paint and it really does a good job at blocking it. So long as you leave it ample time to dry in between coats, you don't wanna spray or brush on your first coat and then you know as soon as it's dry to the touch, go on and, and do the second. Really ideally I like leaving it for four hours or sometimes even overnight and then then I'll go on and apply a second coat and you'll notice with the second coat nothing nothing is showing through so there's no more bleed through there's no more splotchiness the second coat covers everything up perfectly and beautifully so I have this lace transfer from Dixie Bell's Bells and Whistles line and I cannot wait to use it on this project. I just wanted to share how I do these transfers and how I get them on pretty darn quickly. You put it on a flat surface, a flat firm surface, and then you remove the backing. And once you have it stuck in place, the transfer part goes pretty quickly if you chase the bubble, because once you get some air in there, You'll see that this part looks rather different than here because this is all still adhered, the darker area, and this has been transferred onto the furniture. And what I do is I chase the bubble. So this is where there's air underneath here. You have to do it on a flat surface though, so just let me put it here. And you'll notice that I'm just pushing the bubble or chasing the bubble as I like to call it. And 
and pushing the air over to the part of the transfer that needs adhering to the furniture or whatever you may be adhering it to. That could be plastic, glass, wood, walls. These adhere to many different surfaces, so they're fabulous. Once they're adhered, they're not going anywhere. I wasn't planning on doing anything with the front. However, when I looked at it, I thought it needs a little something. I tried putting this medallion would you bend uh, in the middle and I did not really like the looks of it. Um, so then I thought, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna cut it in quarters and just use it for the corners of the desk and i love this look it just adds a little something it makes it look a little more antiquey it frames the front of this secretary desk beautifully and i'm really really pleased with the outcome applying the would you bend on an already painted piece is not ideal i usually like applying my would you bend before i paint anything because of course i had to repaint the top of this now um, but they do apply just fine uh, so long as you use the proper wood glue uh, there's no issue with it whatsoever so once they were applied they were all dry i went ahead and i gave them uh, two coats of the spray and they blended in perfectly. For the last details, I'm taking this pale gold, which is a great antique looking gold, and it's by Posh Chalk Patina by Would You Bend. And I'm just taking the tiniest little bit on my finger, like a tiny, tiny little bit, and hitting all the high spots on this Would You Bend. And it really gives a beautiful antique finish and it's so easy to do. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If so, feel free to leave a comment down below. I always love hearing from you. Um, be sure to subscribe and hit the like button and also feel free to follow me on Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, and of course, as always, salvagedinspirations.com where I have over 400 furniture painting tutorials teaching you how to make your furniture beautiful. Until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.